Hey everyone, I'm Lauren and I'm here today as 2019 comes to a close to share with you all the books that I read this year. I read some really great books, some not so great books, and I'm just going to go through and share a little bit about each of them with you, give you my star rating, and just let you know what I thought. So I hope that you enjoy this, and if you read any of the same books that I did this year, leave a comment and let me know what you thought about it as well. <laughs> first book that I read this year was The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. And this was a book club pick. I am a part of a book club with some girlfriends of mine and we just pick a book every month and get together and talk about it. And um, this was one that I had recommended based on, I don't know, some YouTube video that I watched and heard that people were really enjoying it. And I really, really enjoyed it too. I gave it a four and a half stars. It wasn't perfect, but it was really close. This is kind of a twisted love triangle thriller. I don't want to give a lot away because I was definitely surprised by what happened about halfway through the book. You learn something and it just is like, holy cow, it changes everything. So I really, really love this one. I would definitely recommend it. And I, I'm excited to read their other books. Um, I know an anonymous girl is out and there's some mixed reviews, but I'm definitely going to be reading that one too. The next book I read was another book club pick, and this was a nonfiction book called Digital Minimalism, Choosing a Focused Life in a Noisy World, and it's by Kel Newport. And this one I gave three and a half stars. I really, really liked it, but I didn't really enjoy reading it that much. I don't, you know, it's nonfiction. So if you like that, you probably would really love this and you might give it a higher star rating than me. But for me, nonfiction, I love to learn, but it's not as enjoyable as reading a fiction book. So three and a half is great as a nonfiction for me. Um, and I would recommend it. It's all about technology and the power that technology has over our lives and over our habits and um, what we can do to kind of disconnect ourselves a little bit from that so that we can have a more focused and enjoyable life. And it's really good, you guys. There's a lot of really good information in here and I would love to read some of his other books as well um, because it really made me realize how dependent on technology that I am and how many of the things that I do are just like habits that are so bad for wasting time. Um, I even took Facebook off my phone for a little while after reading this book because I was feeling quite convicted. So um, if that's something that you're interested in learning about, I think this is a really good book for that. The next book that I read was another book club pick. So you can see that I really wasn't reading all that much aside from book club stuff at the beginning of the year, but we read The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin and I really did not enjoy this one. Um, I gave it a two stars. I can see why other people might like it, but for me, I just really did not connect with the characters that much. And I don't know, I just didn't, I didn't love it. It follows four siblings who uh, go to a psychic and find out what day, what the date is that they're going to die. And then it unfolds each of their stories as you get up to the date of their death. So I, I like the concept. I just didn't love the story and the execution. So I wouldn't necessarily not recommend this one because I can see why people like it, but it just wasn't my cup of tea. The next book I read was Uprooted by Naomi Novik, and I really, really enjoyed this one. I gave it a four stars. This is a fantasy set in a world where there's this evil forest, and um, it follows our main character who lives in a village that is protected from this forest by a man called the dragon and he's a sorcerer. He takes a girl every 10 years in exchange to, to live with him and they don't actually know what happens to her when he picks her. Um, but that's the exchange that they have for that protection. And so it follows our main character who gets chosen and her story. And it's definitely a lot of magic, a lot of fantasy. The writing is beautiful. Um, I loved this. I, I look forward to reading the next book in this series. It's They're not connected, I don't believe, but Spinning Silver. I'm really looking forward to reading that one and I would definitely highly recommend this one. The next book I read was my favorite book of the whole year and this is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. I gave it a full five stars and it deserves every single star. 
It is so good. It is a thriller about a husband and a wife, and I'm really not going to tell you a lot more because I don't want to give anything away. This one had me on the edge of my seat. I could not put it down. I needed to know what happened. I was up until like 2 a.m. reading, which I don't do because I have a toddler that doesn't sleep, and I need my sleep, um, but... Yeah, it was so good, you guys. Like, definitely recommend. This is her debut, and I was just blown away, so I cannot wait to see what else that she writes because it's all going to be amazing. I just I just know it. It's going to be amazing. You need to read this one if you have not. The next book I read was Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco, and this one I also really enjoyed. I gave it a four stars. This is part of a series that I will be continuing on with. This is set in the Victorian era and follows Audrey Rose, who is an apprentice for her uncle who um, does autopsies, and Jack the Ripper starts murdering people in the town, and so she works to, to find out who he is, and her partner is Thomas Cresswell. He is like one of my favorite characters from this entire year. Uh, so definitely love the dynamics between them and yeah, really enjoyed this book. The next book I read was In an Absent Dream by Seanan McGuire and this is the fourth book in the Wayward Children series. So obviously I've read them all now and I think I've given them all four stars. I don't think I love this series as much as other people do, but I do enjoy it and I really like the shortness of the books, the fantastical elements in the stories. This one um, follows Lundy and she enters a world of reason and logic and um, you just get to see her story unfold. So I would recommend this one. I think it's a good series and I, I would like to read more by Shauna McGuire too, especially Middle Game. I'm definitely looking forward to reading that one this year. The next book I read was Sister's Fate by Jessica Spotswood and this is the third and final book in the Cahill Witch Chronicles, I think is the name of the series. And I gave this one a four and a half stars. I'm looking back on my rating now. And I honestly wonder if that really was accurate because I'm having a hard time even remembering what I loved about this series. I, you know, I enjoyed all of the books and I think they were entertaining, but whether they were really that great, I don't really know because like I said, I just don't, I'm not feeling anything for them now. And I think that for a true four and a half to five star book, I, I should be remembering and feeling something. So <laughs> take that rating with a grain of salt. But um, this is a good one. I think especially for uh, younger readers, I think this is a good place to start with like magic and fantasy. So I would recommend it. Yeah, it was good. The next book I read was another book club pick, and that was And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. This is an older book. It's about 10 people that get brought to an island together, kind of under false pretenses, and they slowly start to die off. And so you are trying to figure out who the murderer is and what's happening and what's going on. And uh, it was good. I gave it three and a half stars. It's a quick read. I didn't think it was anything mind blowing, but it was good. My, I think most of the people in my book club group gave it a higher rating than I did. So um, I definitely would recommend this one. It's, it's good. It just, I love thrillers. And so in terms of thrillers, it's, it wasn't my favorite, which is why I got three and a half stars. The next book I read was Sadie by Courtney Summers. And this one got a lot of hype this year, I think. I liked it as well. I gave it four and a half stars. I thought it was really, really good. And it definitely was one that I wanted to keep reading and to see what happened next. It follows our main character whose sister is murdered. And so she sets out on a journey of revenge, essentially. It's good. It's really dark. Uh, there is definitely a lot of trigger warnings in this one. So if you're going to read it and you have sensitivities to certain things, I would definitely read about it first before picking the book up, but liked this one a lot. Definitely would recommend. The next book I read was Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. And this is a nonfiction book as well, kind of about taking care of yourself and becoming more confident. I liked this one. I gave it a three and a half stars and definitely found some good things that I could take from it and think about for my own life. I wouldn't say it was anything life-changing. I don't know that I really changed anything about what I, you know, how I live my life or anything, but it was good. I like Rachel Hollis. I listen to her podcast. I think a lot of what she teaches is good. 
um, especially as a female entrepreneur. Her podcast is very uh, business focused, which I like. But this book was just okay. I probably will pick up her next one, which I think is more business focused as well. But uh, yeah, it was good. Not perfect, but good. The next book I read was The Wicked King by Holly Black, and this is the second book in this series. I read The Cruel Prince at the very end of 2018, and I really like these books. I think I gave The Cruel Prince four and a half stars. I gave this one four stars. It's a really good fantasy series. I would definitely recommend this one. I don't really know how to explain this one. It's set in fantasy world where there's fae and it's pretty dark. I will say that it's pretty dark. It's gritty. It's good. It's good. The next book I read was Girl Code, Unlocking the Secrets to Success, Sanity, and Happiness for the Female Entrepreneur. This is by Kara Alwell Leba. And I found this book at a thrift store. It's a nonfiction book uh, about becoming a badass female entrepreneur pretty much. And I gave it three stars. It's just average. Nothing really groundbreaking, but it was motivational. Yeah, I mean, it, it was good, but nothing special. <laughs> the next book I read was Amor Amor by Christy and Becca Ritchie, and this is the first book in the Ariel Ethereal series, I think it's called, and this is a romance set in Vegas following um, like acrobats that perform the shows down there. And I liked this one. I Every once in a while, I get in the mood for a good romance. And yeah, I enjoyed this one. I gave it a four stars. I would like to continue on. Um, it's a little bit cringy at times. But overall, I really like uh, anything that has to do with like the circus or dancers or performers. And so this book kind of like checked that box in terms of things that I like in books. The next book I read was An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina, and I gave this one three and a half stars. It's a thriller very similar to And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, which I just talked about. This one follows a group of people who get snowed into this lodge and people start to die and you're trying to figure out who the murderer is too. So yeah, I think I gave them both three and a half stars. They're they're good, just like nothing groundbreaking in terms of the thriller world. I'm trying to remember if I predicted who the killer was or not. <sighs> I don't really remember, but I do, I do think it was good. I would recommend this one. I would read more Sherry Lapina for sure. Um, I think maybe I would have enjoyed it a little more if I hadn't just read and then there were none so recently, but they were so similar that I think um, I just needed maybe something different or should have read it at a different time. The next book I read was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, and this is a book that everybody read this year, and um, I did too, and I loved it. I gave it a five stars. I loved the old Hollywood aspect of it, and I loved Evelyn Hugo as a character. I thought she was strong and resilient, and she knew what she wanted, and wasn't gonna let anything get in her way and she was willing to do whatever it took and that's not me in real life and so uh, it's enjoyable to read and to kind of live through someone else's story so I definitely would recommend this one I cannot wait to read Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid and yeah that would definitely recommend this one the next book I read was Lock Every Door by Riley Sager and I gave this one a four and a half stars this is another thriller and it was really, really good. It follows an apartment sitter who gets hired to like, yeah, babysit this apartment basically to live in it until the next occupant uh, can move in. And some creepy stuff happens and people go missing. She starts to feel really unsafe. And so she's trying to get to the bottom of what's actually happening in this apartment complex. It's very gothic the building that it's set in is like really old and has gargoyles on the roof and it's like real creepy and the ending of this one was like so weird but so good like I I did not expect that and it all made like such perfect sense at the end and it was just like a whoa moment you know like one of those reveals where you're like what it was so good so i definitely recommend this one yeah i almost want to give it a five stars but there was certain points in it that i was a little bit bored so that's why i gave it the four and a half but it's really really good really good the next book i read was the christmas train by david baldacci or baldacci i don't know how you say his name but um this was a book club pick 
they wanted a fluffy Christmas read, so I said, sure, why not? <laughs> and I read it. I gave it a two and a half stars. It was just not my style. I don't get into the fluffy romances where everything really works out in the end. And I guess this one was made into a Hallmark movie, which is just really not my style either. It was kind of funny though, because I was telling my dad about it and he had just watched the Hallmark movie like the night before. So it was kind of funny that I actually had something book related to talk to my dad about because that doesn't happen. But he likes Hallmark movies. So that, uh, yeah, that was funny. But yeah, none of us loved this. And if you like fluffy reads, it's fine. But it just essentially follows um, this reporter who goes on this train trip and he ends up running into his ex-girlfriend and you can guess what happens. Yeah, they, they get stuck in some winter storm on this train and there's some thefts happening. They try to make it exciting, but yeah, not my thing. The next book I read was City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert, and this is one that I really, really enjoyed. I just finished this one not too long ago, and I gave it a four and a half stars. It follows our main character, Vivian, who um, grew up in a very affluent family and failed out of college and just disappointed her parents, and so she moves to New York to live with her aunt, who owns this like little rinky-dink theater where they do you know, just very working class, cheap shows. And she falls in love with the city. She explores a whole new side of herself that she never knew about when she, um, you know, was so boxed in by her previous life. And they come up with this production for this show called City of Girls. And it's their biggest show yet. And this book is really more about like, female sexuality and figuring out who you are and like abandoning the the constraints that have been put on you um, to really explore your freedom and I don't know it's really really good I definitely enjoyed this one and would recommend so the next book I read is actually the second to the last book on this list and I actually just finished this one last night and it's called The Road Back to You an Enneagram Journey to Self-Discovery by Ian Morgan Cron and Suzanne Stabile. This was so interesting to me. I haven't rated this one yet because I really struggled to rate nonfiction, but I almost want to say it's a five stars just because it opened my eyes so much to just the dynamics of the of our human race and like how personality can have such an effect on what we do and how we interact with people and how we act when we're stressed and how we act when we're stable and when we're healthy and unhealthy and oh it's so interesting i definitely heard about the enneagram before and um had like taken the little online test but this book breaks down each number for you and goes through all those things like what what a one looks like when it's healthy when it's thriving when it's unhealthy when it's stressed when it's um, secure and what that means for your spiritual life this is written by a pastor so it does have a christian aspect to it but it's it's very little, but it does talk about what that means for your spiritual life. Yeah, it's so, so good. Like, I'm I'm a nine. I might do another video on that and just kind of talk about what that means to, like, discover that I'm a nine and uh, discover what that means for how I think and act and make decisions and all of that. Like, it was just really, really interesting. So, if you've never read anything about the Enneagram before, I recommend this one. I, I think it was really good. It talks more about the struggles that come with each number, but that's in an attempt to help you grow from it. So this is one that we picked for our book club that we're going to be discussing in January, and I'm just like really excited to talk about it with someone because, I don't know, it's just so interesting. I was really, really into this. And the final book I finished in 2019, I finished it last night at like midnight, was Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. And I loved this. I gave it a four and a half stars. I took way too long to read this because I've had it sitting on my bookshelf for like forever. And I don't know why I didn't want to pick it up, but I'm so glad I did. The The beginning was slow for me. I It took me like I don't know, a month to probably read the first third of the book. And then this last two thirds, I like flew through. So the world building and stuff, um, it was good, but it just, with 
this busy season and all that it, it really wasn't like capturing my attention enough to make me like really want to pick it up and read constantly but oh yeah these last few days I have been reading it like crazy because it's so good and this is a heist story um, this group of misfits from a gang get hired to uh, break into the ice court which is like a super fortified secure city and um, they have to break into the prison to find this prisoner and oh it's so good you guys and the ending I'm like holy cow I need to pick up the second book like right now because I need to know what happened so I highly highly recommend this one uh, I think it's just the right mix of like dark and um, light-hearted with some of the characters being really funny and the relationships are good like you're just rooting for everyone to to get together and oh it's so good so definitely recommend this one I'm I'm sure most of you have probably already read it but if you haven't pick this one up because it's really good so that was my year in books everything that I read in 2019 I read parts and pieces of other books that I either DNF'd or have put aside for the time being but I'm really looking forward to 2020 and what that will bring I'm definitely in like a reading mood again and have really started to recognize that reading is part of my self-care routine that that I need and so um, I'm making it more of a priority and it's been so good. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Like I said at the beginning, if you have read any of these books and you would like to share your thoughts on them, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. If you're new here, subscribe. I would love to have you back for another video. So I will talk to y'all later. Bye.